Hey YouTubers, today we're going to explore one of New York's unique gems, Roosevelt Island. It stretches from East 46th Street all the way to East 85th Street. But if you don't have a reason to go there, it's easy to overlook. Some people live in New York City for years, or even their entire lives, but have never been to Roosevelt Island. So what's the big deal? It offers stunning views of the skyline, a tree-lined promenade that's almost never crowded, practically no traffic, and a peaceful vibe worlds apart from busy Manhattan. We'll take a look at some interesting places on the island. It was once home to an insane asylum, a prison, and a smallpox hospital. But it was transformed into a residential oasis for the middle class. Lately, more changes have been coming to Roosevelt Island. We'll see how the island is being carved up by developers determined to gentrify the place. Since the 1970s, it was home to a racially and economically diverse population, but thousands of new luxury apartments and a Cornell University campus are starting to remake the island into something very different. I'll show you what I mean when we get over there. Let's get on the tram and we'll be there in a few short minutes. That's 2nd Avenue. We're being lifted 250 feet into the air. What an amazing view of East Midtown. From here to the river, the buildings are almost all residential. That's First Avenue. We're riding alongside the Queensboro Bridge, completed in 1909. So incredible. Now you can see Sutton Place coming into view. Swanky neighborhood. People who lived here in the past include Marilyn Monroe, Joan Crawford, Freddie Mercury, and Michael Jackson. Way in the distance, you can see the skyscrapers of Lower Manhattan and Brooklyn. Gives you an idea of how massive this city is. Cars are zipping between Queens and Manhattan on two levels. Looking back, you can see where we started. We're almost there. Ah, Roosevelt Island, I finally arrived. These are cherry trees along the water, and in the springtime, it's pink all the way down. First, we'll visit two sites at the south end of the island. Then, we'll head north to get the lowdown on how money and greed are changing this place. That's the smallpox hospital. It's New York City's only landmarked ruin. This was the first U.S. hospital dedicated to fighting smallpox, and they put it on this island, separated from Manhattan, to prevent spreading the deadly disease through the city. Now, a group called Friends of the Ruin is advocating for the fenced-off structure to become accessible as a park. 
Here we are at FDR Four Freedoms Park. It's pretty amazing. This island was named after Franklin D. Roosevelt in 1973. So the city announced plans for a park on this site. Almost 50 years went by and it never happened until 2012. This park is supposed to be a tribute to the basic human freedoms. Each of these granite blocks weighs 32 tons. From here, you can see the United Nations established under Roosevelt's presidency. This is the section of the island that's being transformed into Cornell Tech. Right now, they've finished four buildings. Eventually, there will be 10. This is where the rest of them will be. When complete, Cornell Tech will bring thousands of students and faculty members to this one sleepy residential island. Longtime residents are worried that the construction of this large campus might lead to a decrease in the amount of affordable housing on the island. Well, I've been living here for over 25 years um, ago, and uh, there's a lot of changes uh, on Roosevelt Island. Now we have city bikes, and uh, we have Starbucks, we have, uh, what do you call it, Duane Reed, that's a good thing. But it's getting more crowded and crowded. Now we have Cornell University, uh, a lot of students. I don't mind, education is very important to everyone, but uh, this is a small island. And uh, we used to have uh, rent control apartments. Um, they took it away, rent control. I'm one of the people who are affected, so the rent is too high. Um, a lot of um, rich people have moved in. So it's, in a way, they're trying, like, not telling us to leave, but they're giving us the door open, please leave. You know, it's only for rich people. So that's not fair. But luxury was not the original intent for the island. Back in the 1970s, Roosevelt Island was an experiment in utopian housing for the working and middle class, created under the government program called Michelama. In return for offering affordable units, developers under the program received tax advantages and low interest mortgages as long as the buildings remain in the program. So thousands of affordable apartments were built here. The tenants formed a stable community where crime is low and people know each other. It's like a small town in the middle of a big city. Roosevelt Island is very clean, it's very secure, no crime. I mean, I've never experienced any crime, so it's zero crime, uh, particularly for we women. We are very safe here. You could go to the city anytime, you could come back late, uh, you are safe. So it's a very safe place, uh, safe for women, for, for, uh, safe for all genders and that's it for the kids. Yeah. Thank you so much. <laughs> You're welcome, absolutely. It has always been a mix of different races, income levels, and nationalities. But in the past 20 years, the island has become more gentrified. One by one, the Michelama apartments are being transformed from affordable units into luxury units. Every time someone moves out of the Michelama apartment, landlords are able to increase the rent without restrictions. Gentrification is threatening to change the special character of the island by pushing out the working class people who are the pioneers here. Hi, my name is Bernard Dove. I'm a professional dancer. I teach jazz line dance. I've been dancing at uh, New York Apollo Theater. I've been dancing at Madison Square Garden. I've been here since 1991. I live in a senior building. In fact, I'll be 80 in August. Yeah, I was born 1940. To me, getting on Roosevelt Island is like a vacation. You're getting away from everything else. Even though I was born and raised in Brooklyn, New York, I love this island. And when you come downstairs and go right to the edge, there's the water. You can sit there and relax. You know, we're surrounded by the water light. So it's a beautiful place. 
Until recently, Roosevelt Island was never a crowded place. Now, it seems developers are trying to squeeze as many people as they can onto this small island. Everything grows, so you have to roll with the punches, you have to deal with it. They keep putting up stuff. We're going to be walking on top of each other. <laughs> this is Riverwalk, the cluster of new buildings Bernard was talking about. And they aren't much to look at. This area feels sterile, to be honest. But next we'll visit North Town, the first community on the island. And it has a style all its own. Since Roosevelt Island is totally owned by the city of New York, officials wanted its development to benefit the widest range of New Yorkers. The city approved a master plan for a new kind of urban utopia, designed by architects Philip Johnson and John Berge, surrounded by water and tree-filled parks, on a small island uniquely situated in the middle of a huge city. They planned a single main street running through the town center with limited cars. Instead of cross streets, they planned pedestrian walkways going east to west. The most important part of the plan was that housing had to meet socioeconomic requirements. 30% low income, 25% moderate income, 20% middle income, and 25% market rate. Let's hop on the bus to North Town and see how this visionary master plan worked out 50 years later. I love exploring North Town. The architects created a total sense of place. With creative landscaping and edgy architecture. In fact, Netflix series Maniac used it as the set location for a retro futuristic version of New York. A series of apartment buildings face an angled main street. The buildings are interconnected by a system of covered arcades. With shops underneath and apartments right above. Residents can walk to what they need while being protected from the weather. In the center of the town, there's a historic church and surrounding plaza where you can catch the farmer's market or enjoy an outdoor meal. Garbage is never an eyesore here because an underground system of vacuum tubes carries it away at 60 miles per hour. The buildings are also connected to indoor and outdoor community spaces for social events, the arts, and youth activities. The island has its own schools, daycare center, and post office. In the early days, private cars were strictly limited on the island roads, following the Johnson and Berge master plan. People were meant to park their vehicles at the Motorgate parking garage and ride the mini transit system from there. To this day, a fleet of electric buses serves the island with no fare required. But the wealthy people moving to the island don't think much of the car-free idea. Not everything in the master plan was actually built. The harbor and the town square never came to be, probably because the crucial subway stop promised in the 70s didn't arrive until 1989. By that time, the original plan lost its momentum 
and we ended up with the boring Riverwalk complex instead. Before I lose my momentum, it's time for lunch. The island supermarket is food town. It's big, practically suburban sized. And I love the deli in here. They make great sandwiches. Here's a bit of trivia for fans of American Horror Story. See the old building behind me? It used to be part of the New York City Lunatic Asylum. Inside, there was an octagon-shaped foyer and a grand staircase that was the inspiration for the Briarcliff Asylum in Season 2 of American Horror Story. Legendary reporter Nellie Bly went undercover here and wrote an expose about her experience called 10 Days in a Madhouse. The city's master plan called for this landmark to be restored and made accessible to the public. Instead, it became the entrance to a private luxury development called the Octagon. When I was shooting this video, I was told to leave. Another piece of New York history, sold out to private interest and lost to the public. There's one more landmark we have to see before leaving, the Roosevelt Island Lighthouse. So let's go to the northern tip of the island and check it out. Lighthouse Park has plenty of open space with a view of the water all around. You'll often see geese hanging out. They're used to people, so they pay me no mind. This is the Roosevelt Island Lighthouse, built in 1872. It's a New York City landmark, designed by James Winwood Jr., the same architect who did St. Patrick's Cathedral. The stone that they built with was quarried on the island by inmates from the asylum. When I started doing my own digging on Roosevelt Island, I discovered a colorful history, far beyond what I expected. And now when I visit the island, it's more than just a great place to walk along the water. I love it for the community that was built here from a set of progressive ideals. Successful despite the cynics who didn't think it would work. Now, the dream is being spoiled by greed. In a very short time, Roosevelt Island is becoming just another rich Manhattan neighborhood, instead of the mixed income community that it used to be. And look at what we saw at Cornell Tech. It could end up doing to Roosevelt Island what NYU did to Greenwich Village. Overwhelm, a small, charming place with too much growth. Change happens. Get used to it, is the lazy response I hear too much. As if we have no control over how our cities are planned and built. It reminds me of something Governor Newsom of California said earlier this year. The future is not just something uh, to experience. We are not victims of fate. We can manifest the future. It's not something in front of us, it's something inside of us. I say this often, it's decisions, not conditions, that determine our fate and future. Thank you for joining me on this exploration of a diverse island community floating on a river of change in the core of the Big Apple. What do you think about the changes happening on Roosevelt Island? Let us know in the comments section below. Please subscribe to my channel for future videos on New York City and hit the notification bell to receive more updates.